Hello. Hello. I'm sorry. Hey, hey, hey. I forgot to put the disclaimer. There we go. Uh, whew. All right. Here we go. Y'all know what it is. <laughs> 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 Hello, everybody, and happy Thursday. Welcome to Veganish. I am your host, Dr. Monique, your board certified family physician who you know as a physician in the kitchen. It is my pleasure, honor, everything to come to you every week, share with you my journey toward a more plant based diet, share with you my highs, my lows, just general stuff I think you need to know, bring you along in the process. And I am joined by Mr. Ellis Dean. How are you doing today, sir? I am doing well. How are you? <laughs> I'm great. I'm great. I hope everyone had, I mean, it was, it was, uh, this past weekend was, you know, we had Easter, we had Passover, Ramadan. I uh, hope everyone who celebrates, hope you had a, a wonderful time with family uh, or just time to, you know, unplug or relax. I spoke with one of my uh, sororals. I said, you know, how was your Easter? She said, I didn't do it anything. I just, <laughs> and that's okay. That is okay. Sometimes you need that. So you guys, um, I'm back. At home, if you're with us last week, I was I was on location, <laughs> so I'm back home this week. But um, but yeah, you know how we do here. We we like to have you tell us where you are watching us from. We thank you for watching us. Share with us where you're watching us from. Rep your city, your zip code, your country your state, wherever you are watching us from, please let us know. Also, tag a friend or two or 10 because caring is sharing. And we are going to be sharing some really good information that I hope is of value to you. Um, and so you want to have them come on in here and fellowship, as my grandmother used to say. And can, I give, can I give people a challenge? If you can remember yeah. what, what middle school you went to, put your middle school in, in the uh, comments. Oh, section. he's taking it back like a track <laughs> Middle school. Oh my goodness. Middle school in there. If you can remember what middle school you went to, the name of your middle school, throw it in the, in the comment section. I, I'm about to celebrate my 30th uh, year, my 30 year college graduation. He's talking about some middle school. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Some some of the people that are watching us may be younger. They may be closer to that. Middle this is very age. true. This you know is very saying? true. So okay, so they're starting to pop up. We've got Highland Mills, New York. Thank you so much for watching. What I was going to say is, if you are watching this on the replay, please be sure to drop hashtag replay so that we know that you stopped by. So I mean. We've got a lot to get to today. Um, you know, I always say this is the fastest 30 minutes of my day. Mm -hmm. And because it's, it's so, and you know, because I, I, I get to do some research, I get to really, you know, look into what I'm going to be sharing with you guys. So I learn a lot and I want to share it all with you guys. I look up and the time has just flown by. So Mississippi, Davis Middle School. Okay, Tracy, I see you. There we go. There we go. God, I'm trying to remember middle school. Don't remember. I, I it's, it's a blur. <laughs> oh my goodness! I'm that's that's really telling my age, I think. But so this week we are going to be talking about preservatives. So um, you know, this is this topic has kind of come up in other things we've discussed on the show, but we thought we'd give it its own. Um, you know, do do give it its due and have a show where we talk about preservatives. And so as we go along, you know how we, we like to make this interactive. So please put, start putting your questions in um, so that we can get to as many of them as we can. And um, just talk about preservatives and kind of what they are and, 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 you know, do you need to be concerned about them? Are they harmful? Are they not harmful? So we're, we're going to get into this. But before we do, I mean, Ellis, you know, I like to, you're, you're my man on the street, right? And so I like to start with you. You tell me kind of what questions you have or what conversations you may have had about this so that, you know, hopefully I can touch on some of that stuff. You know, it's always kind of um, thinking about this because I, I know there are some, some preservatives are good, right? Like, And so that, that was my thing, like, what are the good what are the bad? How do I avoid the bad preservatives, but not just like go so crazy where I'm just eliminating all these things out of my diet that may or may not, that, that might not hurt me, you know? So I just want to kind of know what, what's the good preservatives versus the bad preservatives. That's a that's an excellent question. And definitely I'm, I'm going to be touching on that. And here's just a simple rule of thumb. I think, you know, we, we'll get into the, the nitty gritty and the details, but if it's something you can pronounce, Versus if it's something that sounds like in your middle school chemistry class, right? So that right in and of itself, that's an easy peasy rule of thumb because you're absolutely right. I mean, there are some natural ways to preserve things, salt, sugar, 
oil, you know, olive oil, mm -hmm. vinegar, those are all natural preservatives, right? Because, you know, why do we preserve food? Well, we want it to last longer. We don't want it to spoil. We don't want bacteria and mold to overgrow. So there's a, a, a reason, a, you know, a good, perfectly harmless reason for using preservatives. Right. But, you know, we on this show, we talk about more natural, less processed. So those are the, the kind of things that will come to mind. Not to mention there are ways to preserve food, right? So there's freezing, there's dehydrating, you know, like when you, if you have a, an air fryer or, or in your oven on real, on low temperature, you can make kale chips, you can dehydrate uh, fruit, you know, make your own fruit roll-ups, things like that, apple chips. So because moisture, right? So, because why do we do that? We're removing the moisture, we're removing um, the, you know, bacteria and mold, they like moisture. So if you take that moisture out, you are decreasing the risk for bacterial um, and fungal and mold contamination. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there are definitely natural ways of doing that. And it's so, it's so cool. This week in my cooking class, we're doing raw. We're doing a raw, um, um, you know, we learn about raw foods. And one of the foods that we're doing is kimchi, which okay. is, is, but how do we make kimchi? Fermentation. That's another way to preserve food. And you're just using salt. You're using um, oil. I'm sorry, you're using vinegar, um, taking out all that air before you back that cabbage into the into the jar. So all of those are natural and healthy ways to to preserve your food. The foods that tend to have the you know the 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 not so good preservatives are going to be your packaged and processed foods. So again, we're not we're not really saying anything new and earth shattering here, but you know maybe sometimes when you break things down into little bits and you think about things a certain way, it, it, it's just another way to present the information. So you know crackers, cereal, <coughs> ready to eat um, snacks, things like that, ready to eat meals, meat, deli meats, sauces, all of those things are going to have preservatives because why? They want to prolong the shelf life. They want to, um, you know, so that it, they they can they can make a profit. Um, and that it can it can sit on the store shelves a little longer, uh, if need be. The other part of that, though, the other thing I want to just distinguish really quickly is additives, because sometimes pe people hear food additives and they hear preservatives, and they're mm -hmm. like, "Well, is that the same? Are those different?" So preservatives are added, as we said, to decrease spoilage, bacterial overgrowth, prolong shelf life. Whereas additives are things are, are put there to enhance the way the food looks, right? The color or the texture or the taste. So uh, one way to kind of think about it is all added, all preservatives are additives, but not all additives are preservatives, if that makes sense. Mm, okay. So all so, wait, wait, say that again, run that back for, for us. Okay. Got to process that. Say that again. Right. So additives are things that are added to the food to either make it more visually appealing, uh, to change the texture, to um, just to, you know to, to really kind of draw you and make you want to buy it. They don't. They're not. They're not preserving the food. They don't do anything to the length in the shelf life. So all preservatives are additives because you're adding them to the food, but not all additives are preservatives. Okay. Got it. Got it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, like, if they add some coloring to um, make the it look a little brighter, or to make you know it, it stand out a little bit more, that's an additive, but it's not going to make it sit on the shelf longer. Got it. Exactly. You, exactly. You got it. So, what we'll do is, we'll, and you guys, please go ahead and start putting your your questions in because one thing I want to I want to share off the off the bat when I read this, I was like, whoa, like how are they getting away with this? So. One of the things, you know, we we have agencies in this country that are, you know, supposed to be uh, looking out for us, right? The FDA, we have, you know, USDA, these these things, these companies, or not companies, these agencies that are supposed to be looking out for the American public, making sure that uh, oh, Strong Island is in the house. I come through Strong Island. I love it. Um, but they're supposed to be, you know, making sure that we're not being exposed to harmful things protecting us. But one thing I came across about is something called GRAS, which is a pre an abbreviation, and this is about, about preservatives, called that the FDA, the FDA recognizes, and it stands for generally recognized as safe. So what does that mean, generally recognized as safe? That sounds kind of nebulous to me. Basically, it's a way that the FDA came up with. So things like vinegar, uh, so other food additives, they they kind of got like grandfathered in. Well, we don't need to 
really vigorously check you out. We, we're going to just say you're safe. You, you, you're kind of given that designation. But what happened is over time, the FDA pretty much kind of got overwhelmed. There was like budget cuts things. There was a slowdown. And so they were taking too long to approve new ingredients, new, new additives or new preservatives. So they said, well, you know what? We're going to allow these food companies. This is just crazy to me. They decided to allow the food companies to review their own ingredients and decide what's safe. That, that, that requires a pause, it, right? That requires a pause. A big pause. Wait, 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 say that again. <laughs> well, because of budget cuts and things slow down in their workflows, the uh -huh. FDA said, we're going to let these food companies do their own, say if something is safe or not. So, so wait, wait, let me get this straight. That's like the bartender let you come back behind the bar and make your own drink. Huh? I, I was thinking, <laughs> yeah. I mean, and so they can submit their reviews. They can do their review. They can submit it to the FDA, but it's not even required by law. And so the other thing, of course, the food manufacturers are like, yes, like this is right up our alley. Well, well, well what's now, man? This is exactly. But this is what, but who, like, who knows? Like, if you don't research, you don't know that this is happening. Mm -hmm. So they, they have they have estimated that out of, out of 10,000 ingredients in processed foods, the FDA has not reviewed the safety of 3,000 of those. So about 30% have not even been looked at by the FDA. Now, I, I have to see what date this is, because hopefully that's changed, but I don't know. And then roughly 2,000 of those flavors that were deemed safe were by an industry association. So again, not even the FDA, but the, the, the people making the stuff were like, yeah, yeah, this is good. You straight, you good. So that's that's like allowing uh, people just to police themselves. Pretty much. Basically. So they're yeah. like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's good. They, yeah. they monitor these decisions, but they don't really extensively review them. Mm -hmm. um, and then another thousand additives have been called safe by food companies without even sending a notice to the FDA. Because, again, it's um, this they can do it, but it's not required by law. So that's just with that in mind, that really makes, you know, puts it upon the, the, the public, the consumer to really become educated about what you're eating, what right. these things are. So we're going to touch on some of the more common ones. Um, that are used in this country and kind of what to look for on a label because, you know, again, if you can't pronounce it, you probably shouldn't be eating it. And the further from the whole food or the natural source, the more highly processed the food is, guess what? The more likely of those ingredients it's going to contain. And remember, too, we've talked about read, reading food labels before. The, it's in descending order as far as... Um, how much of it that item is in that food. Right. So if these chemicals are in the first, you know, two, three, four items, you're getting more of those than something that's at the, you know, the end of the list. So just, just keep that in mind. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. We, yeah, I, man, I, I just, I can't even, I can't even wrap my mind around them fools trying to make a profit, getting to police themselves. Like I just, yeah. I can't, I can't. But you know, it's not the first time because if you look at things like, you know, big dairy and big meat, if you look at some of the things that we've grown up with, like the food pyramid or how many glasses of milk you should drink or how much cheese you should get, those studies, if you look, some of those studies were actually done by, guess who? Big dairy. Yeah. Big meat. They're not, you know, if, as a physician, we look for, we look for, you know, certain types of criteria in a, in a scientific study, right? Like neither person knows, the, the doctor nor the, the subject knows what drug they got, double blind, because that way you can't be influenced. These are not those types of studies, right? If the pharmacy, if the, excuse me, if the, if the agricultural big ag, right, big agriculture is funding these studies, how, how objective is that? Like that's, so, you know, it just really becomes incumbent upon us to really educate ourselves. So we're going to touch upon some of the common ones and talk a little bit about what, if any, um, health effects they have. Guys, let me take a, a second. I don't know what is going on with the hydraulics in my chair. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I was wondering. I was like, okay. I don't know what's going on. 
So, guys, after please, uh, Marlena said, we have to start cooking for ourselves. I, exactly. I mean, exactly. And, you know, that's what I, I hope on this show that you guys are, are getting at least – you know, informed, but not overwhelmed, right? We we try to straddle that line because uh, we know that a lot of the disease processes that we're seeing, it's coming from the, you know, a lot of it is coming from the foods is what you're putting in. And so we, we'll talk about some of them now. So go ahead and start dropping your questions if you have any questions or, or just personal experiences mm -hmm. with, um, you know, like, so if you, if you know that you can't take a certain additive or preservative, you know, let us know because there are some health benefits. Um, but yeah, if you're just joining us, we're, we're just talking about preservative food preservatives, kind of what to look for and what do they do? What health benefits they have, or, or excuse me, health uh, impacts they have. So one of the ones we've talked about before are nitrates, nitrites, nitrates, and in and of themselves, those are not harmful. Those are found in your, your processed meats, right? So your sausages, your hot dogs, your bacon, right? We've always talked about everything is better mm -hmm. with bacon, right? But those processed meats do have these nitrite, nitrate chemicals. And what happens is in this in the body, in this, when exposed to stomach acid and other things, they can actually be converted to something called nitrosamides and nitrosamides, not to get too chemical, but those are the harmful ones. Those are the, the forms that actually are carcinogenic, which means it increases the risk for developing cancer in the body. So that's why we say, you know, when you're looking at your diet, cut out those um, processed meats because those have been linked to increases in, in cancer in the GI tract, you know, stomach, esophagus, uh, colon, right? So that's where that those recommendations come from. I know, Alice, I know. Yeah, you know, nothing good. I know. I, I know. Every, every week, I, 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 every every week, your soul dies just a little bit more. <laughs> I'm just like no bacon. I can't have bacon. But you know, there there are. I don't eat bologna. I eat but, but oh, bacon. Oh God! Please, not don't don't say the b word. Do not say the b word. Come on now, come on now. We, we all ain't been this. Well, I I ain't always been this fancy. No, and, and no, no shade. I believe me, my my mother may have some baloney in her house right now. I'm, I would put it past her, but I just you know it, it's just, ugh. but anyway. So John said he started buying meats without nitrates nitrates years ago. Yeah, that that's a great way to start um, because again, in the cooking process, that those nitrates can be um, transformed into those harmful chemicals. So you've got nitrates. You've got something called. Uh, and, and I do want to say, because nitrates are actually found in vegetables. So nat vegetables are, are natural sources of nitrates. Again, it's that chemical um, transformation that happens in meats that makes them not healthy for you. Right. So um, the other two I want to mention are BHA and BHT. Um, you know, butylated hydroxybutylene and, and hydroxyzanosone. We don't need to know the chemical terms, but basically these are antioxidants, right? So we've talked about how some preservatives are there to, to prevent the bacteria and mold overgrowth. These are antioxidants that are added to help things like um, fat from going rancid, right? Have you ever had like a, like, you know, bacon grease. If you leave the bacon grease on the stove, it can get on the, on your, you know, you leave it in that jar, it can get a little rancid, a little funny taste. So uh, BHA and BHT, they prevent those fats from going rancid. So um, in small doses, probably okay, but they're also found in things like margarine, um, those butter replacement spreads, things like that. So they're considered possibly high uh, carcinogenic to humans. So again, in large enough doses, the concern is, are they increasing the risk for cancer? So moving on to sulfites. Now, this is one that I, I think is, is really interesting, particularly in people who um, are asthmatic because they may not know that, you know, they eat something and they, they feel like they're wheezing and they may like, well, well, why am I wheezing from something that I ate? No, it's actually not in your head. It's sulfites uh, contain sulfur. Mm -hmm. And um, they're found in things like dried wine, I'm sorry, dried fruit, wine, um, sausages again, and they can trigger allergy symptoms, including and even asthma attacks. 
So mm -hmm. people who are asthmatic may notice that when they eat certain foods, they are more symptomatic and it's from the sulfites, the preservative sulfites in the in the foods. Um, so Walter, Walter Ham, I love your last name. OK, we're on a show called Veganish and his last name is Ham. I love that. <laughs> Um, he said, what can we eat? We, we're going to circle back to that. Um, Grass. Walter, we, let me tell you something, Plan. Some, some, some green, some red, some yellow peppers, and some grass. That's about it. <laughs> ignore Ellis. And we, there are lots of things you can, we can eat. So Lynette says she always avoids anything with food dye. Great, great uh, suggestion. Some think of it toward the end of the ingredient list. If it's not dangerous, can you comment? So, right. So, again, like if uh, in decreasing order, those ingredient lists are. Um, so the ones, the things at the top are going to be in the highest proportion all the way down to the end. But, um, you know, if it's still, if it's in there, it's it's in there. But no, if it's at the bottom, it's not going to have um, as much or being in as high as a proportion as the first, second, or third item. But, you know, if it's only five items in there and it's it's one on the five, it, it's it's hard to know exactly how much is in there. So great question. Um, so we've, we've kind of touched on some of those. So, you know, there are other health concerns as well, as far as like, you know, again, we've talked about the increased risk for cancer, possibly even heart disease. Um, and even in, in children, there's been some concern that, um, these, some of these additives can have behavioral effects in some children who have ADHD, it may worsen their symptoms. So uh, what we recommend parents do is, you know, keep a food diary. You know, you notice when your child eats this, does the ADHD seem to get worse? Because not all children with ADHD have the, that interaction or, or effect from food. So it's something that... Um, working with your child's doctor would be able to, you know, start to keep a food diary and kind of start to see, well, you know, is this um, playing a role in, in some of those, those symptoms? So we, we're coming up, oh, you know, again, fastest uh, 30 minutes, but there are other, uh, just, to, just to throw some names out there, some things you may see. Um, and these can also be in things like your plastic. That's why we, we recommend not storing or microwaving food in plastic containers. Use glass instead, because there are things like ph uh, phthalates, PFCs, percolate, all these chemical terms. And um, if they're in the plastic, um, and, and when you microwave them, some of them can actually have um, estrogen-like effects. So in, in men and males and boys, it can interfere with puberty and fertility, you know, lots of lots of different things. So before we, we wrap up, I do want to, uh, I found this cool quiz that I wanted to run through with you guys. But if we have any questions, let's see, could that explain allergies developed later in life? John, you hit the nail on the head. Exactly. You, you are so right. Kind of think about it like this, too. Um, even though it's not an allergy, it's more of an enzyme deficiency. But, you know, like as particularly African-Americans, we can drink milk as children, eat dairy as children or young adults. And then the older we get, we get lactose intolerant. Well, why is that? Because our body chemistry has changed. We've lost that enzyme that breaks down that sugar. And now we get the bloating and the, and the, side, the, the stomach symptoms from that. So definitely okay, bubble guts. Bubble guts. <laughs> I'll say it. I'll say it. You, you, you stay classy, yeah. Doc. I'll say it. Y'all you know, you know what it is. If you like color, you don't talk about it. No, but yes, definitely, John. I think you know if you're exposed to things later in life, um, but you know, adult onset asthma. Who's to say some of that is not being affected or contributed to by the sulfites in the food? Um, Did you say sulfites was, was in what? Was in wine? Sulfites are in wine. Yeah, the oh, wine, okay. sausages, um, dry fruit. So make you know dry your own fruit. That way you know it's no sulfites. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, Dana said she did that with her son who has ADHD, and she's watching to see how it works. Yeah, definitely. Keeping a food diary can be. Definitely yeah. helpful. So we're gonna run through some of these. I thought this was I thought I love a good quiz. You know, I feel like like who doesn't like a good quiz? Of course you did. You went to medical school. Of right? course, right? I went to you know like quizzes. Twenty eighth grade. So yes, I like quizzes. <laughs> no, and some of these you guys should know. If you've been watching the show, you should know some of these. Some red food dye is made from bugs. True or false? We we we've talked about this one. So Dana says she her mom became allergic to seafood at 15 and ate seafood all her life. I love oh thank you so much, Dana. You know, I, I actually I have a cousin, unfortunately, who developed a severe uh, peanut 
allergy and actually died uh, anaphylaxis and he, you know, no one ever knew he was allergic. So yes, it can definitely happen. Um, organic wine has no side effects. Well, there you go. There you go. Uh, Ellis, you can get some organic wine and not have to worry about those cell fights. So you guys put in the chat, do, does red food, is, does some red food die? Is it made from bugs? We've talked about this. You guys know the answer to this one. Patsy's already put her answer up, but I got her on screen there. Um, okay. Yes. That's, yes. Thank you. True. Exactly. Um, let's see. Let's get to another one. Pink slime is... The waste left in meat grinders, beef treated with ammonia, or coloring in hamburger. None of that sounds good. None of it. <laughs> None of it. Mm -mm. Pink slime is what? <laughs> is what? <laughs> the waste left in meat grinders, beef treated with ammonia, or coloring in hamburger. I'll just tell you, it's beef treated with ammonia. Oh Lord, have mercy! Why is beef being treated with ammonia? Isn't ammonia that 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 cleaner that that ammonia, smells really yeah. bad? Yeah. No, it because it, it, it's they use it to kill things that can make you sick, like E. coli and salmonella, and then they mix it in the ground beef oops, to make it cheaper. And my computer just died on me. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted, we we're actually about out of time anyway, but I just thought like, this is a really cool quiz. This is on WebMD and it's um, about additives. Computer is just showing out right now. Um, about food additives, kind of like what what's, you know, what's in your food? What are you, what are you eating? So Lynette said, yuck, that is, is isn't that gross? So it's, it's to the point where, I mean, and I don't want to make you guys feel like, oh my God, we, we can't eat anything. <laughs> The, the purpose of, of sharing this information with you all is, again, so that you can start to read those labels better, make better choices. There are going to be times where you have to get stuff this process. And that's OK. If you But if you can start to try to incorporate more and more whole foods, plant-based foods, that if that outweighs the the times that you don't do that, then you'll be fine. Um, she said it's in cigarettes also. Yeah, ammonia, exactly. So when people, they're in the alley nap when they smoke. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So well, I would, there, there's a there's a documentary, and I know it, it came out a while ago. But if you if you still have Netflix, because I see people are dropping their Netflix <laughs> like like it's a bad habit. But I know. If, if you still market, wanted, it's crazy. I pray if you still one of the five people that have a Netflix account <laughs> or, or borrow somebody else's. You know, black folks. Yeah, I got some. Of this. <laughs> I got some of this love. I can down on that though. Let's keep, let's keep it one hundred. Uh, what the health, right? So there's a documentary on there. It's called What the Health, and it talks about what what uh, Dr. Monique is really talking about, about and literally how some of these industries are in partnership with like major health organizations, and so they're driving the diet of some of these health organizations. And it's coming from a suggestion by a food organization, and so they're 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 in almost like cahoots, but they're they're in partnership with one another, and so therefore, even so, so the diets that they're recommending for certain health conditions may not be the best for you. Right. But it's just because that food industry is trying to get you to lean one way. You know, I'll be honest with you. I started watching that. I couldn't even get through it all because I was like, oh, my God. Like, you guys think I'm bad. That show was really eye opening. And and you're right. They talked about how um, I think it was the American Heart Association. Yep. You go on their website, you know, heart healthy diet. They've got red meat and chicken and yes. you know and it's like <laughs> so it's, it can be very confusing to, to people who are like well if the american heart association is telling me i could eat a steak what are you talking about lady you know so <laughs> it can be confusing but you, you at the end of the day you have to make the right decision for you and your family um but i'm just here to try to give you some tools to, to do that with um so Yvonne said she will replace it. Cook. You were in cooking class. Oh my goodness. Never apologize for being in cooking class. I hope you cook something delicious. Uh, Patsy said we must make better choices using this information. Yes, it definitely. And then Lara, Lara is saying that she went 100% plant-based after watching What the Hell. So yeah, it can be like, oh, my, like I want my son to watch it. And I think he's like ducking and weaving because he's He's a he's a meat eater. He's a carnivore. Mm. And he, he's not feeling that. And I was like, but I want you to watch this. And I told him, I said, you know, if I knew now, if I knew then when you were younger, what I know now, there's no way you would have you would have ever had meat. 
never. And so as a parent, I feel a little bit of guilt because I'm like, oh my goodness, you know, but anyway, we're working on that. So eat fresh and everything in moderation. There you go. Uh, Yvonne says she's in culinary medicine at a medical school is where... Oh, I love it. I love that. That is culinary medicine is, is yes, we, we know that food should be our medicine and, and medicine should be, you know, uh, I'm butchering the saying, but basically if food is your medicine, you won't need as much medicine, you know, because you're, you're eating correctly. So, um, right, fresh and pop, but you're doing it, Yvonne. You might have to come home and do a, a, do a demonstration on that. One. She's fancy over there with the parchment paper. Okay. Okay. That's, that's a chef move right there. I, I do that in culinary school go, myself. Go, go ahead. You fancy, huh? She is. <laughs> for the community. That is excellent. That is, that is so good. I'm glad you're taking advantage of that, right? That, I'm exactly. glad you have it that it's there and you're taking advantage of that. Exactly. Yeah. I, I'm with you, Lyra. I, I watched my sister encouraged me to watch what the hell and I got mad at her after I watched it because you can't unwatch it. You can't unsee that. You can't so, unsee it. And so I was like, you know what? And I was eating a, a hamburger while I was watching it and I had, <laughs> I had to put it down. No, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> well, you guys and ladies, thank you so much. I mean, we, again, you know, our time has flown by. Um, Next week, tune in. I what was the topic I wanted to talk about next week? Um, it is I'm it's escaping my mind right now, but I promise it's a good one. And when I think of it, we'll let you we'll let you know. I think all this talking about these preservatives just got me. Um, is it, I think living in a food desert is a challenge. That's that's yeah. Vaughn is doing. Is that um? Uh, is that the uh, Dr. Lisa Fitzpatrick, Yvonne, is that who you're working with uh, out of D.C.? So if that's Dr. Uh -huh. Lisa, then she, yeah, she, she is special. And she does a really, she's an infectious disease specialist, and she does a really great job, um, really in the community, uh, does great work in the community. Uh, but she moved into the community there in the uh, 7th and 8th Ward in D.C. And, uh, oh, yes, okay, great. And uh -huh. um, she talked about how, how difficult it is because there's a food desert, and it really is hard for communities, uh, you know, certain communities, especially communities of color, to get access to fresh food and vegetables because you you may not even have the transportation to go to the farmer's market or go to a grocery store where you can get fresh fruits and vegetables. But guess what? you got the corner bodega and it's full of preservatives and sugars and salt. And, and the liquor store and the McDonald's. All that stuff that's, that's killing us uh, as a people. And so we definitely have to do a better job of, of educating ourselves about these things. And so, you know, like we always say, shop the perimeter, okay? If it rots, it's good for you. It, it's, if, if, it, if it rots quickly, okay? Um, read your labels. If you're in the aisles, read your labels. Understand what is placed in your food and try to get food in its most natural form. So even if you're buying bread, the white bread ain't gonna do it. I know it goes best with barbecue. I know, I know. That, that white bread stuck to that rib is oh, delicious. It's no, delicious. I, I but, <laughs> but it's not good for you. So get you some wheat bread or get, you know, <laughs> get some brown and, bread. And, and experiment with, with other, you know, techniques. We mentioned pickling and fermentation and freeze drying. Those are some, you know, some of the other ways of preserving food, uh, you know, freezing, storage in a cool cellar. If you have a house and your, your basement is cool, that's a great place to, to mm -hmm. store things like potatoes and root vegetables, right? And they'll, they'll, they'll last for quite a while. So, um, yeah, starting your own garden and start a community garden. Exactly. These are yes. all ways to, to do that. So share, share Sherry, here. thank you, Sherry, for, for joining us from Brooklyn, Ben Stott. So we're going to get out of here, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. We will be back next week, which will be the last week of April. I'm going to just let's sit there for a minute. That's just crazy. My son is going to his prom tomorrow. So wow. you guys, I know, I know, guys. It's just, it's going so wow. fast. Everything is just going so fast. But thank you all so much for watching. We will be back next week. I'm Dr. Monique. Take care. See ya.